Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Adventures of Kramer. So as you can tell from the title, biggest thing that I found so far by swapping out routers and trying to see what you can actually do to increase some of the Starlink speeds and kind of helping to show a little bit about what is going on with the original Starlink from what I can tell from teardown videos and things like that along the way. Let's get started. Okay, so I'm not trying to like knock the included Starlink router, but there has been some things that I've noticed. Um, there's a lot of different things that I do like about the router though. I, I will admit that I do like how minimalistic it is. Um, I think it's a really cool looking design, sharp angles on there, not all these extra open ports for dust and things like that, because typically I set a router aside, it's there, I expect it to do it. I don't wanna have to sit and clean it out like I do on my desktop computer for fans and stuff. Um, I especially like from one of the teardown videos that I saw, is it YouTuber, um, is it Turtle Herding? Um, that another one of my breakdown, like my reaction videos I did on his breakdown, it was able to see this huge heat sink. And so basically that whole front half of that router ends up becoming connected into a large aluminum heat sink that makes that whole front half an aluminum heat sink. Um, which is awesome to be able to help try and reduce any type of heats. There's no noise. There's not a ton of like distracting lights happening on there. It is the older technology, the Wi-Fi 5, the wireless AC, not necessarily that's bad. I did not know though that and this is off of Starlink's website that they do say that it includes the WPA2 and WPA3 security. I did not know WPA3 security though was a part of Wi-Fi 5. I thought that was something new in Wi-Fi 6, but that could be something just how they made their own. Um, it does only have the one LAN auxiliary port. It has the, um, obviously the main one that comes into it, but it only has the one LAN being able to go out. Um, and there's basically no router access right now, especially during the beta. And we'll see what happens by the time it comes out to like full on for everybody. I would assume over time, eventually they'll upgrade this router, but it should still do pretty good for a lot of people. Um, there is a couple different questions though that people have been asking on some of my other different videos. And I'm hoping some of these can help to try and answer some of them. One of them is be able to try and see, can you actually switch between some of the different Wi-Fi bands? And this is also off of the support website. And the long answer comes down to Starlink picks it. It picks it on its own. And I know there's sometimes that even on my own computer, when it's trying to set and pick off of my old router, um, one of the different ones that would try and pick, it would not work as well as another one, which was weird, even though the other one would have a like a lower connection, I would actually have a better speed. And this was off my old internet. Um, short answer though, you can't pick it. Starlink just, it does it on its own. Um, so if that's something you're having to set and try and pick, especially off of like older stuff you're trying to get connected into, um, cause I would imagine if this is for going out for internet for a lot of people out in rural areas, maybe you don't have a lot of this extra stuff already set up because why would you buy fancy routers if you don't have high speed internet? Um, another one I've been getting asked a lot, does it support mesh networks? Uh, the short answer from their site basically comes down to no, it doesn't. And a lot of that comes into, hey, you can't set and access it. But if you do go out that auxiliary port and you connect into an additional router to be able to set and try and connect into it, one that does support mesh, then you should be just fine. Definitely try and keep it far enough away from the original router to not cause any interference because right now you can't um like turn off the wi-fi at all on the included starlink router um unless you're going to go through and like what somebody had said in one of the comments of like build a faraday cage around it to be able to actually block those signals which does sound pretty interesting though i would like to try and figure that out and also trying to research what the size of the holes needs to be for the wire mesh though now there's all kinds of different new routers out there you might have an existing one there's a lot of different things that you can do. I'm basing this off of the new AX router technology. 
RGB. I mean, honestly, I, I think it's amazing. I mean, I know I said before, like, I like the minimalistic design, but there's something about those glowing lights and how they're doing. And there's all kinds of patterns you can pick, especially on this Asus, the RT-AX82U router. <laughs> it's cool. I don't, I don't know. There's something about it that just kind of nerded out on. So... But in reality, though, I do like the design. I think it's really neat how there's like all these kind of sharp angles. Um, I know for sure this does has the WPA3 security, which is nice being able to have that. It's nice just being able to actually access and get into my own like router and be able to like adjust different settings, hit different priorities, have the nice Wi-Fi 6 for the higher data speeds. Granted, it's not hitting... I mean, typically you could probably even pull off wireless G for some of the different speeds that have still been happening with uh, Starlink so far. But for some reason, though, I've still been seeing. You'll, you'll see some results later on. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to spoil things too quick, though. I do like that there's four different LAN ports. I do like that there's a USB 3.0 connection into there. I can go through on the app and prioritize things. It has, I mean, this particular one has a, a couple of different things that are really nice that you can start to connect up and be able to access. This particular one though, um, it does have to where it has mesh network support capability. Uh, I just, there's some different things in there though. Now, one thing though that you can do with this though if or like it ends up happening which i it's frustrating that i don't like about it is if you connect straight off of the white port on the power supply which is basically the internet coming out of it and you connect that into this router it will work you will get internet things like that it, it comes across it's nice but you can't access anything from the starlink app anymore you the only way to still access and have this router up and still get stuff from like Starlink app is this has to be coming off of the auxiliary port and then I can be setting and accessing it. So right now, um, that's a lot of what I kind of like how I have mine set up and I'm still being able to pull some fairly nice speeds, which I like. This is the biggest piece on it. Um, below you can see this is, is still not bad, but this is some of the stuff that I'm seeing off the Starlink AC router. And these were within two minutes of each other. I tried to do it as quick as I could to be able to try and help measure these different times and speeds. And so what you can see, the difference between the AC of the Starlink, the Wi-Fi 5, compared to the Wi-Fi 6 of the ASUS router, I mean, we had about around the board 30% quicker on everything. 30% lower pings, 30% faster downloads, and 30% faster um, uploads. So that's awesome. I mean, is that something significant? Yes, I, I do think it is. Grant, is that a couple tests? Yes, I have done more tests that have helped to actually like reinforce these types of results. Um, so it wasn't just like a one time kind of lucky thing. It has done this multiple different times. One thing that I do want to address though, doing this does not deal anything with drop connections. Drop connections is all about the actual dish on your roof and what it's pointing up and seeing. Whether or not you start having bad weather, whether or not you start having like birds flying or like landing on top of the actual dish. I've never noticed any birds on there or anything like that, but this is just some different things you have to keep in mind. Wind starting to blow up. Um, I know whenever if I get any like 20, 30 mile an hour winds start happening, just those little extra fluctuations, even though the, the satellite is really aerodynamic and it holds its place really well sometimes that little bit of adjusting will still cause it to start dropping out so and i've noticed a lot more dropouts here recently than what i have had in the past but i do still think though that switching over to an ax router is helping to actually to increase some of my speeds even with coming out the auxiliary port through the actual starlink router which is just kind of blows my mind a little bit Thanks for watching, make sure to subscribe, hit the like button, comment down below.